you have already seen this in number of games where you have to enter your player's name. If you want to create the same thing in Godot, you have to use line edit node but by default it is completely ugly. So in this video I will show you how you can customize it and make it from this to this. Now before we start making this, we first need to create some images. One background image and two button image for normal and press state and one image for cancel button. I have already imported these images in Godot. Now to create this, I will use canvas layer as a root node so that the layer will stay on the top of everything. Now under it, add a color rec node and in the layout, set it to full rec. Now set it to black color and reduce the transparency to half. Now add a texture rec node and in the texture property, set our background image. After that, set the layout to center of the screen. Now under the texture rec, add a texture button node and in the texture property, Set our normal button image and press button image that we created. Now place the button in the correct position. Now finally add the line edit node under the texture rect. Then move the line edit here and expand it to cover the entire area. Now let's change some properties. First of all enable the clear button. By enabling this, whenever you start typing, this clear button will appear. You can simply clear all the text by clicking it. Now come all the way down and you will find custom style. Expand it and you have to set new style box empty in all the three of them. By doing this, Godot will remove all the default style and show nothing. That's how we get a transparent text field. Now above it, we have a custom icon. And here you can set the style of the clear button. For this, we have created our own clear button image. So just drag the image inside it. Now it's time to change the font because the default one is not so good. So come down again to the custom font section. Expand it and in the font select new dynamic font. Now click on it and you will find a font section again. Inside it you have to put your own font file that have .ttf extension. I already have one in my project so I will use that one. Also you will see a setting section and inside it you can set the size of the font. For this scene I will use 25. Now close this and below it you will find a custom color section. Here we will set the color of different things. Now let me run this scene first. Right now I can click on it and start typing. The font style has changed, the clear button is also appearing. Now while keeping this window open, I will change the font color to white and it is instantly updated on the game. If your window is not staying on the top, you can enable it by going into the projects, project settings, then find windows and here turn on always on top. Now I am gonna set the section color to white and the cursor color to white as well. For the clear button press, I am gonna set it to dark gray. And for font selected, it is going to be black and font color will be white. For this demo, I don't need to set the remaining colors. But you should set this color according to your game. Now our text field is looking way better than before. But still there are some things that we are gonna change. So come all the way up to the top and here I'm gonna set the max length to 20. So user can't enter more than 20 characters. Then a little bit down, you will see a placeholder section. This is the hint text that will be shown when the text field is empty. I will write enter name and set the opacity to something like 0.4. At last, under the carrot, enable blink. You can also change this blinking speed. The lower the value, the faster it will blink. Now if you run the game and just start typing, you can see the carrot is blinking now. But it has one problem left. You see, when I run the game, the text field is not in the focus and I have to click it first in order to start typing. Now to solve this, we need to add a script to our scene. Here first we are gonna create a variable line edit that contain the line edit node. Now create the ready function and inside it we simply write line edit dot graph focus and that will put our text field in focus as soon as the game starts. Now go to your texture button node and add the button press signal to the script. Now inside it we will print the text by using line edit dot text and after pressing it we will delete the scene using Q free. Now if we run the game you see the text field is in focus and when I press the button it print out the text. Well, this is all you need to create a scene that will take input from the user. Now let's see how you can use this scene in your game and use the user input. For that, I have created a basic scene for demo. Here the root node is simply node 2D which contain our player scene. Then we have tile map which I used to create these walls. Then I have my HUD scene which contain my joystick and home button. Now the important thing is area 2D with a collision shape. And I have connected the body enter signal to our world node. Now we want to display our text field scene when we enter this area. So first we check if the enter body is player. Then we preload our text field scene and create an instance of it. Then we can just simply add this instance as a child node of our scene. Now you can see when we enter the area, the text field appears. But the main thing is to transfer the input from one node to another. For that, you can use signal to transfer the data. So go back to your text field scene and in the script, create a signal. Let's call it get name. Now place a bracket and inside it write any variable name. It is just to show that the signal contain one variable in it. When we are pressing the button, we emit the signal. And for data, we will pass the user input. 
Now come back to our world scene and now we need to connect the signal that we have created. Since the text field is added on runtime, so we have to use connect method to connect our signal. Now write scene.connect, then we have to write the signal name which we want to connect. In our case it is get name. Then we write the node to which we want to connect. It is the same node so we will write self here. Now at last we need to give a function name that will be executed when we receive the signal. So let's create a function on get name and it will receive the name from the signal. For now I'm just going to print the variable. Now let's run the scene and see what we got. So as I move inside the area, the text field scene appear and I can simply type the name. And as I press the OK button, it will delete the text field node and we got the name in the output. So it looks like everything is working fine. But there's just a little problem. You see, when I enter the area again, it will ask me for input again. So whenever I get inside it, it will ask me for input. To solve this, go to our scene, then in the script where we are printing the name. Right after that, we will delete the area 2D node using the remove child function. So if you run the game again, and let me switch to remote tab, and here you can see we have area 2D node. And once I enter it, the text field node is added to the scene. And once I press the OK button, both text field and area 2D node are deleted. So now it will not add text field again to the game because there is nothing to detect the player. Well that's all for today, I hope you find something new in this video. If you have any doubt write down in the comment section and I will try to answer them. Also like and share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos. For now thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.